All right, everyone. Last week, Andy No once again went into the Portland riot zone. He's been covering Antifa quite a bit. Wrote a book actually on the subject uh, and got you know attacked and and beaten up. And they were threatening to kill him, which you know, Antifa has done to people before. It's funny because when that happens, the media won't talk about it. They don't even class it as left wing violence. Probably they probably say, well. But they killed someone, so they can't be Antifa. So we're going to class this as right-wing violence. Uh, and there were actually people that were calling Andy No out. And some of these people are like legit mainline commentators uh, that appear to be blaming him for having gone there under the, the premise that it's dangerous. And he knew that he has like a mark on his back because you know, Antifa's not a fan of Andy No for reporting on their various violence. BLM hates him. Liberals in general think he's a Nazi, which is completely cuckoo. Uh, if you know anything about his commentary, you'd know his predominant interest is just journalism. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, finding, I'm finding it confusing that anyone would criticize him for that, uh, because specifically that's what journalists are supposed to do. Uh, and I'll get into that a little bit, but first and foremost, if you're watching this video on YouTube, keep in mind down below there will be a pinned comment with links to four other video hosting sites that I use. I make four videos a day, only two of them end up on YouTube, uh, for, mainly for algorithmic purposes and partially as a punitive action because YouTube abuses me regardless of how many videos I make or what their subject is on. Uh, these other sites are actually happy to have me creating content because I'm talented. Uh, YouTube used to know that in the good old days of the 2010s. Uh, but here is the thing, and I'm not going to name names. Uh, because for the most part, the people that are, are calling Andy No out, I have no problem with them like as people, and I've actually like talked to some of them, and some of them are, are really great and talented. Uh, that being said, I find it flummoxing that you would call out Andy No for explicitly doing what journalists are supposed to do. Like, journalism is... is and, and people, by the way, some of these same uh, analysts will criticize lamestream journos for, for... There's a meme. It's like journalists in the 90s, and it's like someone has dropped into fucking Yugoslavia or something like that, and there's like bullets flying around, and like, oh, I might get beheaded for my work. And then it's like journalists now, it's like, oh, someone made a mean tweet about me, help, I'm, I'm being terroristed, terroristed or something. Uh, like that journalists have become pussies, and that's true. Once we get to the point where the last few journalists that aren't pussies are being encouraged to be pussies by people who aren't, you know, going out on the ground and, and apparently see something wrong with that, I think that's regrettable because who else is going to actually report on what's happening in Portland? They've got riots, literally. How, how many nights in a row have Antifa and BLM rioted somewhere in the United States? How many days has it been? It's basically, it's like two years. Well, the lamestream media, if they go there and cover it at all, the only thing they'll say about it is it's fiery but mostly peaceful. And the people watching on TV are going to CNN.com or even Fox News for the most part. All they see is protesters. Mostly peaceful. They, they don't see the, the towering inferno over Wendy's. If they do, it's like, well, they were this, this group of protesters was peaceful, but then they got a little bit rowdy. Yeah, they did a hundred million in damage. Andy No is one of very few people who is willing to literally risk his life in order to get the identities of these people, in some cases to try to infiltrate them, uh, to, to get the, the down low on what they're actually planning, which in, in many cases involves explicitly terrorism. He's one of the few people willing to do this, and he's got people criticizing him for doing what journalists are supposed to do. Well, that's, that's basically like what Antifa says. Antifa doesn't want anyone reporting on their actions. They don't want to be unmasked. They don't want their identities known. They hate the fact that Andy No puts out their mug shots because they always get caught and released by the local prosecutors. But if everyone knows who they are, it can make things a little bit difficult for them. He's, he's slowly making sure that every business in the United States knows all the members of Antifa and who not to hire in any polite company. Of course they hate the, the dude. I find it strange that you would criticize Andy No for doing this. Yeah, he did know it was dangerous to go to the Antifa zone. If he gets beaten half to death, does he not have the right to point out this is wrong? You know, he's, he's sitting there doing his job. He's doing journalism, recording things. He's in a public place on the fucking street. He's allowed to be there under the law. He's pointing out the police don't help you. The police are, are if anything, in Portland and some places complicit with Antifa's violence. He's pointing that out. He's saying, look, this violent group of goons, these hooting morons that smash up windows and burn down Wendy's and, and supposedly are fighting fascism but are acting like jackboots, 
uh, assaulted me again for, what's this, the third time or something? They've assaulted random people. And here's why I don't think that he should stop doing what he's doing. It's funny because some people are like, well, Styx wants him to get killed or something. No, I, I absolutely don't want that. But when, even if he's not there, they like, they graffiti constantly, like they're obsessed with this dude. They're always, always harassing him online. They said the spray painting, fuck Andy No, kill Andy No everywhere. If he doesn't show up, they'll, they'll target some random Asian person that they supposedly looks, uh, in, in, in a superficial manner, looks like him, and they'll beat them up too. Well, I mean, he can't catch a break. He doesn't even have to be there for them to, in, to incite one another using his identity. So what the fuck is the point? Once we get to the point where there are subjects we're not willing to investigate, questions we're not willing to ask, and places that we're not willing to go because of danger posed by criminals, thugs, and lawless morons, we've already lost. That's the whole point. So more power to Andy No. I support fully what he's doing. And by the way, those Antifa mugshots are hilarious. Every Antifa member, for the most part, seems to be a goddamn chucklehead moron. You look at these people like, hmm, I wonder why they can't get a normal day job. Like that one chick there, I, I mean, I don't even want to know what cocktail of drug she was on. She had scrawled, like, weird shit all over her face. And it looked like she literally, like, <laughs> she went into the bathroom tweaking on meth and tried to do her, her makeup, and it didn't come out right. And just look at the group of lunatics there. You can go to his Twitter or whatever, and he compiles them. And I've taken, like, compilations of them and given them funny names and, like, little ditties about, like, <laughs> like the drugs they're on and stuff. It was a great time. Uh, it's his page. His, his material is actually fun. See, that's the other part. It's actually funny because think of the subject that he's talking about. He's talking about the dregs of society. He's talking about a bunch of fucking losers and cringe fringers. Uh, the pink-haired crowd. People who want to be tough. And basically, most of them, I think, join Antifa not out of any deeper ideological sense of duty or something. They're not actually fighting Nazis because there are no Nazis to fight. They think Andy knows a Nazi for reporting on their violence, by the way, just to be clear. Uh, and, and they openly proclaim, by the way, that liberals get the bullet, too. So, you know, like, like they would probably kill the CNN reporters if they thought that they could do that and George Soros wouldn't spank them for it because that's where their money comes from, ostensibly. Uh, you look at these people, and it's literally the dregs of society. And it becomes, you know, almost self-satirizingly humorous as a result of this. Now, Andy No did nothing wrong. Yes, he knew it was dangerous. But he's, a, he's basically a reporter, he's a journalist, he's supposed to be able to go into a dangerous spot and report. Now Antifa is showing less deference for the concept of a free press, and, and of course they don't want a free press, but you know, if, if supposedly they were fighting for freedom as opposed to, uh, and, and against Nazis, you'd think that the concept of having fair journalism would at some point come into play. Uh, they have less respect than Al-Qaeda. Dude, reporters would embed with goddamn ISIS and be able to report on what they were doing. ISIS harassed reporters less than Antifa does. And this is happening on U.S. soil with the apparent will and consent of local state governments. They are, and, and the federal government at this point, Biden's not doing anything about it. Absolutely nothing. Trump mobilized resources. Trump actually attempted to crack down only to have the state say, no, you're not allowed to police, you're not allowed to do anything, they're just fighting the Nazis, they're fighting the evil Drumpfler fascists. Hey, look, the head fascist is trying to defend his fellow Nazis. Yeah, like Andy No, or uh, basically anyone. It's like 99% of the population, dude. Antifa is the cringe fringe, they're the fringe of the fringe. Even far leftists in many cases don't stand with them. So, I mean, I don't understand why anyone would criticize Andy No for getting the scoop on the ground, getting, you know, first-hand footage, and, and especially for someone, you know, who mainly analyzes things like me. I'm very talented and intelligent in my analysis, but I don't go out to Portland and get primary source documentation of Antifa's crimes. I analyze it from the comfort of, of my home office uh, in front of my computer. It would be bizarre, therefore, if I were to criticize him for doing what I'm clearly either not capable or not willing to do. I'm not going to spend a bunch of money flying to Portland to potentially get beaten on by a bunch of thugs. It's just not going to happen. Andy knows willing to do that and get the mug shots and get the, the uh, undercover tidbits about what Antifa really believes, which is mainly, hey, we're going to kill people and burn things down. They're not fighting for an ideological cause other than their own greed and stupidity. They're useful idiots, and they are idiots. And Andy No helps to expose the fact that they're idiots. So, I mean, I don't know why you would criticize him for doing that, dude. That's about all. Peace out.